Batman the Animated Series was famed for highlighting just how similar Batman's villains were to the titular Caped Crusader. Many of his foes would represent a part of Batman, the Clock King represented his methodical nature, to face the duality of Batman and Bruce Wayne, and Mr. Freeze was motivated by the loss of a loved one. These versions of the villains were quite different from their comic book originals, completely reimagined as relatable, tragic figures designed to make us empathise with them and see why they acted the way they did. But not every DCAU villain was quite so deep. Let's talk about one such villain, Roxy Rocket and her debut episode, The Ultimate Thrill. Before I continue with the rest of the video, I just want to take a moment to plug Manly Bands, who have very kindly provided me with a 20% discount code for you viewers to use across their entire site. The main thing that attracted me to them is their very cool selection of officially licensed DC rings that are available to viewers in the US and Canada. They have designs inspired by Batman, Wonder Woman, Harley Quinn, Nightwing, Green Lantern and a bunch of other DC characters, as well as rings that contain fragments of genuine fossilized dinosaur bones. If you are getting married, are already married and want to update your wedding band or you just want to buy some really cool rings, head over to manlybands.com forward slash serum lake to get 20% off your order. Just make sure that the discount code serum lake is applied at the checkout. And yes, you can use this discount code on sale items to make even bigger savings. Thanks again to Manly Bands and with that out of the way, let's get back to the video. Roxy Rocket is unique in that she was created for the DC Animated Universe by Paul Dini and Bruce Timm but she made her first appearance in a Batman the Animated Series tie-in comic book, Batman Adventures Annual 1. In an unusual move, the comic seems to show Roxy coming out of prison after her first encounter with Batman, or maybe her second one, but we wouldn't see their very first battle until the new Batman Adventures episode, The Ultimate Thrill, which aired nearly four years later. We're told that Roxy Rocket was a former stunt woman, Roxanne Sutton, that ended up becoming uninsurable due to her increasingly over-the-top stunts. Now out of a job, Roxy turned to dangerous high-octane robberies. Not really out of greed, but in an attempt to chase a high, or the ultimate thrill, if you will. In the annual, we see Roxy being released from prison and pledging to fly straight. However, it seems that she immediately returns to crime, but something about the case is off. This was a quiet robbery, with no audience, no daring escape. It seemed completely out of character. It would transpire that Roxy was being set up by Catwoman, and Batman and Roxy would have a little team up to clear her name. Some may point to the Batman and Catwoman costume saying that this can't possibly be canon because by the time Roxy debuted in The Ultimate Thrill, Batman and Catwoman had different looks. But I'm of the opinion that the art style is just the style of the person drawing it and shouldn't be taken literally. It's kind of like how Kelly Jones's Batman always has that massive cape and long pointy ears, but Graham Nolan's Batman is more traditional. When Kelly Jones draws one part of the story and the second part comes out with a different artist who draws Batman in a different style, that doesn't mean that Batman has gone off panel and changed his costume. And is it really that hard to believe that Batman or Catwoman might have more than one costume? Presumably you don't wear the same clothes every single day, right? Hopefully not. With that aside, that brings us to the events of The Ultimate Thrill. Usually this is where I discuss the meaning of the character and their appearances, and don't worry, that's still coming. But I'm opening the floor to Connor from Play Content to talk about this episode. Connor recently had me on his channel to talk about some of his favourite episodes of Superman the Animated Series. Go check that video out if you haven't already. So I am reciprocating. The subject of this video, who incidentally is Roxy Rocket for those still unsure after seeing the thumbnail and title, and the earliest actions of this very upload, made her TV debut in the new Batman Adventures episode, The Ultimate Thrill. A tale that lovingly tributes and skillfully modernises the innocent humorous absurdity of the Silver Age comics or the Batman 66 TV series, while seamlessly combining these traits with the dramatic storytelling, layered characterization, and other surprisingly adult elements of Batman the Animated Series, or the new Batman Adventures as the case may be. The episode also offers excitingly elaborate chase sequences which provide the ultimate thrill. Oh, now the title makes sense. The episode's strengths are personified within Roxy herself, whose potential is increased by her distinctive design, unique gimmick, and charismatic voice performance, courtesy of Charity James, who while playing this role tended to become fairly animated. <laughs> In this instalment, Roxy works alongside Penguin, who serves as her fence providing the fine-feathered Fink with a slightly Fagin-esque quality. Which I decided actually suited his character once I'd finished 
reviewing the situation. This is an adventure I gleam a great deal of enjoyment from, even if it's never become a firm personal favourite. And why wouldn't it be good? Providing villains with the characteristics of Fagin has always resulted in good Batman the Animated Series episodes before now, except for the Underdwellers of course, which actually marks the only other time that ever happened. So let me rephrase. Providing villains with the characteristics of Fagin had never resulted in a good Batman the Animated Series episode before now. Penguin's eventual betrayal of Roxy proves that at least in Gotham there is no honour among thieves. Even though in the Beatass episode Second Chance it was implied he did believe in honour among thieves. You've changed, Oswald. In fairness, that's probably the least significant change he underwent when the show became the new Batman Adventures. This betrayal and her final scenes add a degree of sympathy to Roxy that leaves at least one DCAU fan, the DCAU fan who is currently speaking, I I'm, I'm talking about me, wondering what form of dynamic she would share with other Batman villains, or even other Batman heroes. Her playful nature and the fact that, at least to my memory, she never caused any severe irreversible damage, allowed DCAU creatives the opportunity to present her as a reluctant foe, a reluctant ally, a willing foe, or a willing ally. That in spite of her amusing cameo in the excellent Superman the Animated Series episode Nighttime, have unfortunately never been fully explored within the DCAU. One silver lining in the cloud of Roxy Rocket's unrealised potential is that it does faintly prove my theory that the DCAU is contractually prohibited from using potentially interesting characters named Roxanne more than twice in their movies or TV series. Look no further than Rocky Ballantyne from Batman Mystery the Batwoman to find Exhibit B, Your Honour. On that slightly irreverent and slightly irreverent relevant conclusion. It's time for me to thank you, Luke, for the opportunity. Back to you. Okay, so I'd like to embellish on some of the points that Connor raised about Roxy Rocket and her appearances across the DCAU. Unlike other Batman villains, Roxy is motivated by the pursuit of pleasure. Not just any pleasure, but specifically dangerous, adrenaline-spiking hijinks. She's not some tragic figure defined by loss or despair. She's just a hot chick adrenaline junkie shooting around Gotham causing mischief. I found it genuinely amusing that, when reviewing her backstory, Batman assumed that her motivations were revenge after she was unable to continue her career as a stunt woman. It says a lot about Batman that these are the motivations that he understands and tries to apply to Roxy in order to explain her actions. But the reality is, Roxy just wants to get her rocks off. Oh god, is that why she's named Roxy? Now the most immediately obvious thing to me about Roxy is that massive phallic rocket she rides around on, like a souped up female version of Marlon Brando's Johnny from The Wild One. She races around town, rarely doing anything too harmful, although some of her actions do have unintended consequences. This is very well demonstrated in the opening moments of The Ultimate Thrill. Roxy isn't above endangering other people or at least creating the perception that she is capable of harming people. Remember, she was a stunt woman. Every step she takes is calculated with a clear way out, even if the circumstances demand that she makes the calculations quite quickly. Note that she uses a non-lethal smoke gun on the police, although that helicopter crash could have been pretty deadly. The way she so casually shoots the police down is quite telling as well. She goes out of her way to line up with the police to avoid their gunfire, to show how effortlessly she can avoid their attacks, but also presumably to lure out Batman. And when she plays her first deadly game of chicken with Batman, it's Batman who flinches. Now I think that Batman flinches because he knows that her rocket wouldn't be able to withstand crashing into the Batwing. Does that thing even have a seatbelt? Not because he feared for his own life. Towards the end of the episode, when Roxy and Batman hurtle towards a cliff face on board one of Roxy's other rockets, Batman holds his nerve. Roxy thinks this indicates how fearless Batman is and how prepared he is to die, which may be true to a certain extent, but the reason Batman exhibits no fear is because he has a way out. He is completely in control. Roxy refers to her encounters with Batman as dates. She winks at him and blows him kisses, making it pretty clear that she views her escapades as a way of courting Batman. During the aforementioned final game of chicken, when she and Batman straddle the rocket towards their certain doom, she is positively glowing with glee, thinking she has found a kindred spirit. So that makes her disappointment of Batman popping a parachute at the last minute all the more crushing for her. Roxy literally cannot comprehend what has happened, and the handcuffs are the final gut punch as it dawns on her that she was completely wrong about Batman. And these are Roxy's true motivations. She was looking for someone to love, someone that could provide her with the ultimate thrill, and she thought that she had found that someone in Batman.
The final shot of the episode clearly demonstrates how heartbroken Roxy is. Not because her adventures have come to an end, but because she realised that this man that she had become infatuated with, this kindred spirit, didn't exist and he didn't feel the same way about her at all. Roxy's relationship with Batman is contrasted by her relationship with her fence, the Penguin. One of the more notable things about the ultimate thrill, as Connor mentioned, is that it's one of the few episodes to focus on the new version of Penguin. In Betas, he was a grotesque obese man with delusions of sophistication, a temporarily inconvenient socialite of sorts. But in the new Batman adventures, he had graduated to becoming a successful businessman and owner of the hottest night spot in town, the Iceberg Lounge, which also happened to double as his base of operations for his more shady business dealings, such as acting as a fence for Roxy. And it's a great spotlight for his character. In many ways, he is the opposite of Roxy. He doesn't take unnecessary risks and turns down the chance of making more money when he refuses to gamble with Roxy. He's far more calm and calculating and loathes all the attention Roxy brings. Where Roxy is perfectly happy to draw the attention of Batman, abandoning her loop to get away from him, the Penguin is more methodical and cannot accept the liability Roxy poses to him. Despite his attraction to her, he's happy to have her killed in order to protect his business. So I suppose an underlying theme of this episode is desire and rejection. Penguin desires Roxy, who rejects him and he plots to have her killed, although mostly because she's risking his business. Roxy desires Batman, who rejects her and sends her to prison. Batman, meanwhile, desires a crime-free Gotham, but he'll never get that. As an aside, Bruce Timm has previously cited this episode as one of his favourites, and I often say that you can tell a lot about a person based on their favourite episodes. My favourite TNBA episode is Growing Pains because it absolutely broke my heart and asked a deep philosophical question about the nature of humanity and what it means to be alive. But this episode, eh, it's almost entirely the opposite. It's light-hearted with high-octane action, a bit raunchy, with a smattering of despair. Roxy would go on to have a small cameo in the Superman the Animated Series episode Night Time. Roxy plays a pivotal role in that she flees to Metropolis after Gotham becomes overrun by the insane criminals following Batman's disappearance. Superman stops Roxy in her tracks and she explains to Superman what's going on in Gotham, leading to him to investigate Batman's disappearance. But after that, there's nothing else. That's it for her DCAU appearances, other than being in the background of a number of tie-in comics. Roxy is an original DCAU character that has made her way to the mainline comics, but I wouldn't say that she's had any particularly important storylines. She first appeared during Paul Dini's run on Detective Comics in Detective Comics 822, and she is essentially the same as her animated counterpart. Well, I assume that she's the same, because she only really appeared in a few panels. Following this appearance, Roxy briefly tussled with Stephanie Brown's Batgirl, but she was only a henchman, or should that be a henchwoman, is that even a word? Sharing the spotlight with the main villain, Roulette. And that's completely fine. Not every villain has to have a tragic backstory or strong motivations. The fact that she isn't a significant villain means that the creators get to create stories that are less conventional and explore different ideas, like the ultimate thrill. Roxy isn't even close to being one of my favourite villains, but I bet she's a favourite to some of you, and that's cool, because the world would be a boring place if we all liked exactly the same things. And in my opinion, there is definitely room in Batman's rogues gallery for some more light-hearted villains. Okay, that's the end of this week's video essay. Thank you again to Connor from Play Content for contributing towards this video. If you like this video, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, you know how YouTube works. If you really enjoyed the video and have the means, you can throw a buck or two my way via the thanks button, but please only do that if you do have the means. Likewise, I offer channel memberships for $1.99 per month. This will get you early access to my weekly video essay, sporadic members-only videos, priority responses to your comments, an icon on your profile indicating that you're one of my people, and custom emojis. So next week, I will be back looking at a runner-up from my Superman the Animated Series villain poll from a couple of months back. We're going to talk about Superman's developmentally challenged clone, Bizarro. Hope to see you then.